Hi, this is Brad Oster, and today we're at step 10 of our 10-step process to get you out of a temporary facility and into a permanent home of your own. So maybe you meet at a YMCA, you meet at a, a local theater or a high school. The thought of how do we get out of that onto a piece of property and into a facility of our own can be overwhelming. Or maybe you're in a church that's just outgrown your existing building, so you need to expand that building or relocate to a new site. Well, we've put together a 10-step process that's designed to encourage, equip, and empower you with the information and the knowledge you need to not only accomplish that goal of building a new facility, but to do it in a way that is, is really enjoyable, that it's a blessing to you and your congregation and not, not a curse as some projects can become. Well, today we're at, 10 st at step number 10. We're looking at the, uh, the construction, the final uh, occupancy permits, and moving in. The uh, construction process can be a lot of fun. Uh, I think the first 50 churches I did back in the 80s, starting in 1980 and uh, probably up till about 1995, I wore a tool belt and a hard hat and I was on the job site uh, every day and, and I just I just love that. I love the smell of cut lumber. I love the, the satisfaction at the end of the day of seeing a project go from an empty field into the shaping and molding of what becomes God's house and a, a powerful tool for ministry. That's it's just a lot of fun. And again, our goal is to make sure that your project that you're anticipating is just as much fun. So if we can help you with any of that, feel free to give us a call. Construction, a lot of people think that, you know, when the building's done, that's it. Well, not really. First off, getting the building finished and completed can be a real challenge. If you stick to the drawings and you build it the way the architects and the engineers have designed it and you, and you do that just right, and most, most builders do. You know, you get to the conclusion where you're ready to get your occupancy permit. That's where the wild card comes in. See, you don't get an occupancy permit from the city building department or the planning department or, or anybody like that. It's the fire department that gives you your actual final occupancy permit. They hold that up and until they hand it to you, you cannot use that building. Now the problem with that is the fire department, the fire marshal doesn't have to go by the drawings. He can require anything he wants, any time he wants, regardless of, of what an inconvenience it is or what an expense it is. It just doesn't matter. And you can't go over his head. The, the mayor's not over the fire marshal's head. The only person that's over the fire marshal is God. And we should have been going to God from the very start, right? So I really encourage you to go the extra mile in building a great relationship with the fire department. When we build buildings, we have the fire, the local fire station and the fire marshal come out at various stages of construction. We, we're sure to have a big box of donuts and the coffee and everything and quite a spread out for them. If it's lunchtime, we'll cater lunch. But we have them come, when they come in, we have fire trucks and everything. Uh, Best time for your first one is when the building is framed up. Before you've put any insulation or drywall in, and maybe the roof's not even on it, but you want them to tour the building. And the reason is you want them to get a feel for how that building is built, and, and the hallways, and the access ways, and the exit ways, just so that they can become familiar with it. A lot of times, I'll give the fire marshal a, a piece of keel. Now, keel is carpenter talk for a big fat crayon. So he's got this crayon, and what I ask him to do is I want him to mark as he walks around the building everywhere he wants a fire extinguisher mounted on a wall. That's heaven to a fire marshal because nobody does that. And he can walk and say, why don't you put one right here? Why don't you put one right here? And all I've already marked where the drawing says to put them. They have to be every 75 feet. But he, he can add extra ones everywhere he wants. And that just shows him that, hey, we're on your side. We're looking out after fire, life, and safety issues the same way we are. We want the safest building possible. Well, when you do this, you build a great rapport with the fire marshal. That's going to pay off big time when you ask for that occupancy permit. I've had fire departments come into buildings that are 100% finished. Everything's done. The landscaping's in. The building dedication is next Sunday. And they come in and they just start saying, I want this and I want this. I want you to sprinkle underneath the stage, fire sprinkler. I want you to do all kinds of things that can cost tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars and delay your opening by weeks or months. 
you want to make good friends with the fire marshal. That is extremely important. Then when you get your occupancy permit, you celebrate like you've never celebrated before. That grand opening event should be planned out in advance and it should just be phenomenal. Now, one of the things between an occupancy permit and your grand opening, be sure you have a move-in team, a team of volunteers from the church to orchestrate how, how you're going to get everything moved in. Make sure that you've got all your FF&E, remember that's furniture, fixtures, and equipment, all ordered and being delivered in advance of that move-in date so that you have chairs when you move in and you have your sound, video, and lighting, and everything's finished. And there's tables and chairs and whiteboards in the classrooms. You want to be able to coordinate that very carefully so that when it's delivered, you have a place to store it, and then you can get it all installed and up and ready to go prior to your grand opening celebration. The grand opening and the move-in is really just the icing on the cake. Now you get to use that. You get to fire up that tool for what it was designed to do, to encourage, equip, and empower people to go out and invite their friends, to draw in the community, to introduce them to Jesus Christ, to reach the lost, develop Christ-like disciples, and become the powerhouse ministry that, uh, that you've always been. If I can help you do that, give me a call. My name's Brad Oster. You can reach me at 719-439-3019. Drop me an email at bradoster at mac.com or check out our website, www.bradoster.com. And while you're there, check out all the free resources that we have for you. We've covered a lot in these 10 different blogs here of the 10-step process to help you get into your new facility. But on the website, Look at the ebooks. There's a lot more information. We take these steps, go into a lot more detail, and they're all yours free for the downloading. Okay, so remember what Solomon said, right? Seek knowledge, obtain wisdom. These will serve you well. We've put it all out there for you. Please use it. Thank you very much.